We have tried to reach out to the government of Burundi in very many ways. Uh, I would not mention here because I am not go up to telling you that uh, uh, we have communicated to leader X or Y, but we we have tried directly or indirectly to reach out to, to, to Burundi, the government of Burundi, and we continue to do so. I would like to remind you that we have an embassy in Burundi, and Burundi has an embassy, here and we the usual channel we use to go through those embassies to reach out to the government of Burundi, but there are many other ways through friends or through uh, various institutions. So, what is sure that we have tried to reach out to Burundi, and uh, we are going to to continue to to do so. And, uh, we keep trying to engage Burundi on our bilateral relations. But the main channel is our embassies, which, uh, which are there to, to do that work. Uh, we have uh, seen the letter you are referring to. We have seen it uh, in the media. We cannot ascertain its authenticity because it was not even addressed to us. But uh, we can also say that uh, indeed there has been incidents at the border where Rwandan security organs have shot Ugandan smugglers who were resisting arrest, who actually were violently resisting arrest by security organs after illegally entering Rwanda. This is not new, it is an old story and it has been re reported on. And we have also seen these last uh, weeks many incidents of UPDF entering Rwanda, abducting Rwandans and then detaining them illegally in Uganda and demanding ransoms for their release. This has always been communicated to Uganda through diplomatic channels. So what you saw in that letter, it is a kind of uh, accusation in the mirror because the incident we are talking here, we are talking about here, is incident, are uh, incident, which were caused by members of the UPDF who, at uh, various occasions, have crossed the border and kidnapped or tried to kidnap Rwandans on our territory. Uh, otherwise, smugglers have been shot, and uh, in the circumstances I have already explained, uh, this is not something new. As of our relations with Uganda, uh, it is important to record that uh, the fourth ad hoc commission, uh, the fourth ad hoc quadripartite commission meeting, was held virtually on June 4th, uh, 2020. That was a good sign towards continued dialogue between both countries, but these remain a lot. There, there remains a lot to be done, including the continued arrest and harassment of Rwandans in Uganda, and activities of terrorist groups operating in Uganda, and whose primary mission is to destabilize Rwanda. Those are issues which have been raised in these various ad hoc commission meetings and which were not properly addressed. So we believe that uh, the way to go would be to keep uh, that dialogue and uh, to keep discussing these issues, to keep working uh, towards addressing them and uh, just to restrain from accusing, firstly accusing Rwanda of uh, wrongdoings while actually it is the incident you have observed these last weeks were, were caused by U Ugandan security forces which used to cross the border and try to kidnap uh, Rwandans on our territory. But this has been communicated to Uganda through diplomatic channels and we hope that the, these issues will be dealt with and we will be able to talk again and address these issues. We should prevent uh, any escalation uh, of these incidents. 
Uh, Rwanda is uh, Rwandan government is uh, still open to that dialogue, and we we are being helped uh, by the Republic of Angola, the Republic of Democratic, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, for that process, and we hope that uh, we will be able to address these these issues uh, and. Uh, Eventually, we we work on organizing the next ad hoc uh, commission meeting and talk about these uh, recent incidents. Uh, since we met last time in May, um, we have seen a certain number of Rwandans who were detained in Uganda who were released and uh, were informed. Uh, but in the meantime, there have been the incident I referred to earlier, so it is one step forward and uh, two steps backward. Uh, and this is the reason why we think we should uh, uh, put in place all the measures which can keep that dialogue uh, going on and uh, keep discussing issues and trying to address them. Uh, so that uh, where we understand, but uh, takes two parties to, to work on that and to have the political will which is needed to be able to deal with those issues and to prevent uh, other incidents which can arise if we don't uh, prevent them properly through continuous dialogue. Uh, but as, Rwanda, as I said, Rwanda is open to that dialogue and we we are ready to talk about these uh, issues and uh, the main ones being uh, the activities, terrorist activities taking place on Ugandan territory. I mean terrorist activities by groups uh, which aim at destabilizing Rwanda and of course the harassment of Rwandans uh, on the Ugandan territory. Those are the main issues. and. Uh, we are ready to keep discussing these, we are ready to find solutions and even to address the, the issues raised by, by, by Uganda. So that's where Rwanda stands. Uh, for the opening up, the, the, the opening of our airport and uh, uh, the challenges which might come with the reopening of uh, um, the airport. So uh, uh, every step you can do in reopening the economy in this COVID-19 context might come with challenges, might come with challenges. And this is the reason why we used to put in place mitigation measures including requirements uh, and the guidelines uh, which apply to passengers who want to come to Rwanda or through Rwanda, those strategies are in place and so far they are working very well. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, countries have put in measures, uh, have put in place measures to deal with COVID-19 and sometimes uh, they are not harmonized. And this is the reason why you can see uh, this, the, the kind of incident which happened in Brussels when we had passengers who wanted to board planes to come to Rwanda and who were prevented from doing so. We have requested uh, the government of Belgium to give us, to bring some clarity in these measures and the reason why those passengers were, were prevented so that we can advise others who would like to come to Rwanda through uh, Brussels airport. So we are still waiting for for their response and uh, is also uh, as i also mentioned earlier it will be good that uh, a region like the east african community have a strategy have same approach towards all these uh, towards the management of covid19 but this has not been the case not all the time and uh, it can that could bring bring in uh, some misunderstandings, but we are here to address them. Uh, we need to keep talking to each other. And uh, as a matter of fact, the East African community 
uh, is about to launch a system to track uh, the drivers of uh, uh, these uh, uh, cross-border trucks to be able to know who has been tested and where and when uh, so that we can prevent the spreading of the, co the COVID-19 in the, the region. That, that, that's an initiative and uh, there is also in East African community COVID-19 strategy. It is in place. Now we need to, to, to implement and to keep adjusting because this pandemic is, uh, is quite new and we need to keep uh, adjusting the plans and uh, looking at the, the evolution of the pandemic, but uh, there is a strategy in place. There is a there is a plan. Now uh, we need to, to to implement and to put in place implement implementation measures. One of them being the tracking system. Uh, it is called the Region Electronic Cargo and Driver Tracking System. It, it is due to be launched in a, in a few days from now. So that uh, what I can say. So the opening up of the economy can come with uh, challenges, it can come with risks, and we need to think about those kind of risks and put in place mitigation measures and keep adjusting to the situation. On Chogam, uh, Rwanda as a host country for Chogam 2020 has proposed that Chogam takes place uh, on, in the week of June 21st, 2021. And the, the procedure is that the Secretary General needs to consult member states on those proposed dates. Uh, the procedure has been initiated and the deadline is tomorrow. So by tomorrow we, we will be able to know uh, whether there has had any objection from any member state and if not those dates will be confirmed uh, so we wait until tomorrow to know if there is there has been any objection on the proposed date so and uh, if no objection hopefully Chogam will take place here in Chigari in the week of June 21st